The melody melody, so this is what we're hearing. Uh, oftentimes this song, um, all the instrumentalists might play it uh, at least the first chorus through in unison, and then we're going to talk about this little harmony part that happens. So very often you might hear, especially on uh, you know, Oscar Pettiford versions, he's playing the melody on the bass, and so we don't really have somebody playing the root melody on the head. Once it goes into um, the improvisational section, we might get into those chord changes, but yeah, everybody can learn and play the melody on this. You could even play it on the drum set. That's great. Totally okay. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the melody also starts on our home note of concert G. I'm going to play through the first four bars, and then we're going to do it together. All right, so we're maybe just in terms of thinking of what notes are available or most uh, sonically palpable are going to be within this sound of G major 7. So that sort of... All right, so here's first four bars. I'm going to slow it down just a hair. One, two, three. All right, so three and four. So if you're counting along, a one, two, three, and four. The melody starts on the and a four. So one, two, three, and four. I gave it away. You should have that in your ears, but that's our home note, concert G. So I'm playing this in octaves, but you can, whatever register works best for you. So three and four. Okay, so if we break this down. So that's the first chunk. See if you can figure that out on your instrument, maybe with some of that rhythm or just, you know, a pitch of time. Three and four. One, two, try it. You can ask yourself these questions about the intervals. It starts on our home note. Does it move up stepwise? Is there a skip? Is it a chord tone? You know, is it one, three, five, or seven? Scale degree three. One, three, and then where does it go? One. So we're using notes from that uh, G major sound, that G major scale. One, three, one, four, three, one. Then we go down to. That should sound very elemental to this. Uh, it is the fifth of the uh, chord of the scale. So it goes one, three, one, four, three, one, four. Take a second, see if you can figure out that sort of shape, and then we're going to try this together to get some of the rhythm. That's really the characteristic thing uh, about this song. It's pretty much it's the same rhythm through each of these four bar chunks, uh, but there's just a little bit of slight change that happens in the middle section. I'll throw that at you. All right, so to hear it, one, two, three, and four. <laughs> See if you can do that with me. So playing and or singing. One, two, three, and four. Let's do it again. A one, two, three, and four. Great. All right, second chunk. And remember, this is uh, the part of the bass line, or you know, at least when we get to the improv and what usually happens on the blues. The four chord, okay? So maybe think about what notes make up a C uh, dominant chord. All right, so it goes like this. This is bar number five. One, two, three, and four. Okay. Catch that? So it's almost exactly the same as the first four bars, but we need to change that B natural to accommodate the fact that we are over a C7 chord, which in our jazzy ears, we should hear that seventh as being. So if, we're, if we keep the riff the same. Okay, yeah, we, we'd wanna. that four chord because otherwise it's going to be maybe a little bit too big of a clash that we have there. But that's the only pitch that changes. We go from a B natural to a B flat. Sounds like this. Uh, bar five, 
Uh, I'll do bars five and six. This is where we get the B flat. So one, two, three, and four. All right, you try that. A uh, one, two, three, and four. Cool. All right. But then we get to go back to the one chord. We just change back to the B natural. So. So what happens if we put those four bars together? This is bars five, six, seven, eight. I'll play it and you play it after me. One, two, three, and four. One, a two, a your turn, go. Great. So from that point, <laughs> we just get to go back to the first four bars. And even though there's a two, five, one progression happening, the melody sounds like one, two, three, and four. Cool. So you can think of the phrase of this. Um, it's actually like an A, B, A in terms of thinking of the uh, four bar section. So it's the major third. So it's we have that B natural in the first four bars. Bars five and six, we go to the B flat and then go back to the B natural. So that's bars five, six, seven, eight. And then bar nine, 10, 11, 12, we're back to that sort of uh, B natural sound throughout. Okay, take a second if you need to slow it down and connect it, but let's see if we can put all of that together into 12 bars of our first unison uh, leg of blues in the closet. One, two, three, and four. <laughs> tricky little hang-ups that happens with uh, any sort of melody that has an A at the end and then it goes back to the A phrase at the beginning, you need to keep track of where you are. So this is where, it, where it's really useful to um, you know, know that the bass line is going to be playing a 2, 5, 1 and not just hanging out on that G7 chord. So that's going to be useful. But kind of mentally, you know, if you can imagine like a little flag popping up, okay, we're at the top of the form, that's going to help you. Um, the other thing that helps is that when we go through the second time of the form is that one of the people who's playing the melody can do a harmony part. And this is a really common way to uh, embellish this uh, or really any sort of melody is that it's going to play a line that starts up on the third or up a third from the melody. Two, three, four. Okay, so again, if we start on three... So it goes three, five, three, six, five, three, six, five, three, one. Sounds very, you know, within the key. And what do we want to do when we get to bar number five? We don't want that to hang out on the uh, B natural. Ugh. Yeah, so that's just going to be a little bit, probably too much of a clash, but we can go just down by a half step and be hanging out on the B flat. All right, and then our final four bars just goes back to that first idea. So knowing that the rhythm is the same, can you pick out this new harmony part that happens um, very oftentimes like the second time through the form? Um, one of the players, uh, or depending on how many instrumentalists or melody people you have available, you know, they could switch over to that. So let's try this. So this is the one that starts on um, a concert B natural. This is the third. All right, so I'll go play it an octave. So let's just try this. One, two, three, and four. So that sounds really cool when you have one person playing on the 
on the root, the melody that starts there, and the one person that starts on the third. So that's a good reason to get together with a good friend of yours, and hopefully you get a chance to play this with other people and split it up so you can hear what it sounds like to play unison rhythm, but in harmony with another, you know, it might be another horn, or it might be that, like in this recording, we have a guitar doing the harmony part, it could be bass, bass is doing the harmony part. Sometimes uh, Oscar Pettiford would be the one to take that uh, harmony the second time through. Happy practicing. Thank you. 